welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is writing omnichannel chat transcripts to Azure file storage using Power Automate. Let's go. So this video is going to cover two concepts. Number one, we're going to talk about how we can extract chat transcripts from omnichannel. So if you saw my last video, we talked about using omnichannel as a live agent chat solution. And naturally, we may want to go ahead and retrieve the chat transcripts and store in another location for archival purposes. So that's use case number one. Then use case number two is really around connecting to file storage. So I had never done this myself. I have uh, connected to blob storage naturally, but not file storage, which is part of an Azure storage account. And so as part of this specific use case, I wanted to go ahead and write out my chat transcripts to Azure File Storage. So we're going to go ahead and use that as our medium to store our data. So regardless of whether or not you're focused on Omnichannel or Azure File Storage, there should be something in this video for you. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. So first off, just a little bit about how I went and configured my Azure storage account to connect to it and to be able to send files to Azure file storage. Now, as I mentioned before, we do need to create a storage account. Mileage does vary here. There are a bunch of different options, but these were the options that I went and chose. So naturally we need a subscription and a resource group, and then we need to provide a storage account name and a location. So obviously choosing a location that is nearest to your like proximity or your data center is always advised. Then we do have some different options around performance, and this is where mileage does vary. It very much depends upon your different use cases and what you're trying to achieve. Same thing with replication. Um, in my case, like this is not a highly available solution. So those are just areas that you do want to help go ahead and explore. Uh, next up, once I've created my Azure storage account, I do have this option to create file shares. And that's really the focus of what we're gonna go ahead and do today. We can go ahead and click on file shares. Then we can go ahead and click on plus file share and provide in a name. So you can go ahead and provide uh, a name that makes sense for you. And then also quota. So in this case, you know, I'm using one gig. Once again, mileage may vary. Configure the right value for your use case. Now, something that we're gonna need when we go ahead and use the Azure File Storage Connector inside of Power Automate is an access key. And we can go ahead and retrieve an access key by clicking on the left navigation access keys and then choose one of the keys either key one or key two but this is how we will authenticate against the service itself once we are in power automate we can go ahead and find the uh, azure file storage connector and once we found it we can go ahead and use the create file action in order to go ahead and create that file. So that's exactly what we're doing here. Yes, it is a premium connector, so yet yeah, something you're gonna want to validate with your current license to see if you have entitlement to use this specific connector and action. Now, here's where we go ahead and create our connection to Azure File Storage. This is where we need to provide the name of our Azure Storage account, which would have been the value that we had provided when we created it. And then on top of it, this is where we would go ahead and provide our access key. The connection name itself can be whatever we want it to be. Something meaningful is naturally recommended. Then how do we go ahead and write a file to our Azure file storage? Well, we need to go ahead and select a folder. 
Now, when I was created a folder inside of that experience that I showed you a few slides ago, I'm able to go ahead now and locate it by just using the file picker here. So I went ahead and chose the folder that I previously created. Naturally, whenever creating data, we need to provide a file name. In my case, since I'm pulling data from an API, uh, there is no file name that I can leverage that already exists. So here, just for the purposes of this particular video, I'm just going to use the GUID expression, which will generate a unique name for me. Lastly, we need to provide some file contents. In this case, this is a string, but I will certainly show you this in the demo itself. All right, speaking of demos, let's go ahead and let's take a look at a demo. Okay, so last video we talked about Omnichannel, and if you're new to Omnichannel, I'll ask you to go ahead and check that video out. I will include a link in the description where I go through this in much, much more detail. But the, in essence, what we do is we go ahead and we create a chat conversation. So in this case, I'm being asked to provide my email address so that my contact record can get picked up. And here I can go ahead and type store hours. And so what this is going to do as part of the solution that we talked about in the last video, uh, we do have Power Virtual Agents integration here. So right now I'm actually talking to a chatbot. I'm not chat chatting with a live agent itself. But in this case, maybe I'm not getting the information that I'm interested in. So I'm going to say talk to agent. And at this point, what should happen is we should get transitioned over to an agent itself so that we can go ahead and have that conversation with them. So let's go ahead and let's flip over to Omnichannel and our chat experience. And here we go, I'm now inside of the agent experience and we see that we have a chat request. So here we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start chatting with, in this case, Kent Weir, because it was able to automatically pick up my contact details from my email address that I provided. So I can just go ahead and say, hi, how can I help you? And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and say, when will holiday hours begin? We can see new messages are coming in after Thanksgiving. And then we can just go ahead and say, great thanks, bye. Right, and we'll just go ahead and signal that we're done. And then what we can do now is go ahead and end, end this conversation. And now basically go ahead and close this specific chat out. So what we're trying to do here now is we wanna go ahead and be able to retrieve all the chat transcript that we just went through. And yes, there's different ways of doing this where you can download it yourself, um, download it as the agent, download it as the, um, as the customer themselves. But in this case, what we really want to be able to do is to store it um, in some long-term storage for archival purposes, perhaps a cheaper store. And so that's really what we're trying to do here is get the data that's found in our timeline and to be able to basically persist it. And so that's how we can go ahead and do this using a Power Automate flow. Now what we're going to do in this case, I just have manually trigger a flow. I have a variable, which is just of type string. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to query the transcripts entity where all of this data is stored, or at least the, what I would call it, like the header level information, right? We can't actually get all of the underlying chat transcripts from here, but what we can get is we get an important value back, which is our transcript ID. And so what we can do is we can go ahead and use the OData capabilities found um, inside of Dynamics 365. And in this case, go ahead and call this OData service and pass in this transcript ID. Then what we can go ahead and do is we need to convert it from base64 to string, and we will just append it to this chat transcripts variable. And then what we're gonna do is, this is where we're gonna talk about connecting to Azure File Storage. We're gonna go ahead and pass those values into the uh, basically the storage facility. So let's go ahead and let's just run this. And I'll, I'll pause the recording while this is running. So here we've retrieved the list of 
trend of, of transcripts of chats essentially. And then for each one, we're going to go through and grab the details. There we can see that our process has completed and that we've been able to go through and get all 48 records, append them to a string, and then go ahead and write that file out uh, to uh, basically Azure File Storage, which is great. Now, if we go ahead and just flip over to our Azure account and we head over to our transcript archive, we can go ahead and hit refresh. And here we see we have a, a new file and we can go ahead and download that file. And open it. And so here you can see we have a very long JSON file that contains all of our data. If we go ahead and just do a search for holiday, we will find the question around holiday hours, right? And uh, so there, we can see that, it's, that our data does exist. Now, naturally, this is a, a, a large sort of payload. There's a lot of like data that may not be overly interesting to you. So what you can do is go ahead naturally and parse JSON further and extract just the contents that you want to include in, in your file itself. So that concludes this video. Hopefully you found that useful. Go ahead, I would encourage you to go ahead and check out the previous video where we go through the omni-channel in more details. But this gives you an introduction to omni-channel and chat transcripts and how you can extract that information and write it to Azure File Storage. With that, we'll call this a, an episode. I look forward to sharing more information with you. I do post weekly, so go ahead and check that out. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. Also, likes are always appreciated as well. Thanks and take care.